everlasting love is swallowing me whole. What a great lyric. There's something in me that is literally swallowing all of me whole and thus embodying me. We always talk about our ability to embody the truth, to embody that which we are. But there is that which is that has embodied each and every one of us, that has swallowed each one of us and gives us direction and guidance at all times. So this year, our theme is discovery. <clears throat> I discover the unseen in 2019. That's our little slogan. So discovery. And this month, as Steve said, is possibilities. And the title of my talk today is The Beloved Possibility, or as the brilliant Barbara Shane has managed to put, The Beloved Possibility. So why the beloved possibility? Why the beloved possibility? Well, first, let's take a look at the word possibility. Possibility means the state or fact of being likely or possible. So possibility is the state, the state of consciousness you have surrounding any situation, deciding, dictating whether that which is possible will become that which is. So possibility is all that there is and your consciousness decides what it will be. Everybody clear on that? So the question I then have for you today, and I really want you to think about this, is what is possible in your life? You're sitting here right now with these already established premises, AEPs we call them. You're sitting here right now with a full belief system that dictates what's possible for you in your life. And so each one of us here has a different scenario of what we think is possible because we all think different things. We believe different things. You know, some of you are today thinking that it is possible that the LA Rams will win whatever it is they're playing. <laughs> right? And some of you are thinking possibly they won't because that's where you're coming from or maybe you're Patriots fans, I don't know. But they're all aspects of your life are decided based on what you think the possibility is. <clears throat> is it possible that a screenwriter in this room has an Oscar-winning screenplay in them right now? Well, only that screenwriter knows. Is it possible that there is a, 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 a Pulitzer Prize-winning author in this room right now? Well, only that author knows because it will only come to be based on the truth behind the possibility, which by the way, it's possible for any of us to be any of these people. It's possible, <clears throat> but is it probable? It's even probable, but will it happen? That depends on your consciousness and nothing else really. So again, what is possible in your life? What do you see as possible in your life? Do you let your age be part of that? Well, I'm 64, so it's really not possible. Like, for instance, I know it's probably not possible for me to play Pippin. Huh. <laughs> I've always, I've told you that, Yvette, I've always wanted to play Pippin. I never got cast as Pippin. Once I got cast as Lewis, I was like, I'm not playing Lewis, I'm Pippin. I, sh I wish I had played Lewis now, but <laughs> ego kept me from that role. But I know it's probably not possible for me to play Pippin. But is that really true? I am sure there is some senior citizen facility <laughs> that would relish the idea of me donning some curls and playing Pippin. <clears throat> I can still sing it. And if they have bad vision, I'll look good. So see, there is a possibility, isn't there? <laughs> probability, probably not. But there's a possibility. But just, it's up to you to decide what is possible. So Ernest Holmes said this. He said that potential is actually inherent possibility. Inherent possibility, and I love that. We talk about potentiality all the time. I don't know about you, I am bored to death with potential. It's exhausting to have as much potential as I have. <laughs> And you should all feel the same way. Don't you feel that way, Nancy? Oh, sure. <laughs> we all have so much, we have the infinite scope of potential within us as the very presence of the divine. It's exhausting, really. 
So what Ernest Holmes is saying is potential equals inherent possibility. That means it's what you are, inherent, existing in something as a permanent, essential, or characteristic attribute. So your ability, your inherent possibility, your ability to be and do and create whatever you want is inherent, which means it's you. It's essential to who you are. It is essential for you to know, absolutely know, that everything is possible. Nothing is off the table. It's essential that you know that. And you know what happens when you don't know that, when you morph into believing something else? You get sick, you get tired, you get run down. You feel depressed because you're not doing what innately is yours to do. That's what that word essential means there. It's essential for you to get with the program, remember who you are, and start acting like that. Come from that. I hear all the time people talking about, this doesn't seem possible. Well, this is not going to happen. Obviously, I've passed. That ship, ha how many times have you ever said that ship has sailed? Like, no one's admitting to it now. But, yeah, I've heard myself say that ship has sailed. I don't think I would ever say it again. I'm trying to think, what, could, what ship could have sailed for me? My youth? I am very youthful. Age is, youth is not a number. Is it? <laughs> Some of you are like, what <laughs> is he talking about this morning? <laughs> well, I'm talking about your ability to be possible in your own life. So, here's the thing. The title of my talk is The Beloved Possibility. How do you marry everything Heather just sang with possibility? Well, I gave great thought to that. How do I marry the beloved, which is what I am, with possibility? And what I came up with is the very opposite of it. What is not the beloved possibility? What isn't that thing that is so innate inside of me, that, that beautiful, loving thing that swallows me up and says, you are everything, now go be it. And the word that came, I came up with was compromise. The beloved, in the beloved possibility, there is no compromise. There is nothing for you to compromise. And as it says in the definition, there really is no likely in the beloved possibility. There's no maybes. We don't teach maybes. Science of mind does not teach maybes. You never hear a practitioner get up and say, there is one absolute infinite abundance, and that is what and who I am. And what I know right here and right now is that maybe that will be my life. <laughs> and if you do hear that, <laughs> run. <laughs> do not pay them, <laughs> because they will have not said anything truthful. There is no maybe in this teaching. What there is, is pure potential, perfect possibility, and your ability to say yes to it and bring it forward. That's what we teach. So maybe you might be sitting there going, so why doesn't that happen then? Why doesn't that happen? Well, I'll tell you why. Because most of us spend our lives compromising. We spend our lives compromising for lesser than we are really equal to. And Ernest Holmes says, God never compromises with its opposite. So when you're looking for prosperity and staring in the face of lack, you don't compromise those two things. He says when you are looking at a condition that you don't like, turn entirely away from the condition and step into the truth. So there's no compromising here. We don't compromise. Well, I'll have a half-baked career. I can get, I'm sure I can get this far in my career. And now I'm good. This is, this is, this is me. This is what I'm equal to. No. So I want you to just take a look at your life right now and see if there's anywhere you are compromising. It's interesting. Kevin and I were looking for ceiling fans for the kids' bedrooms. And we're, we're just looking all over. And we suddenly, we found these two amazing ceiling fans. And they were exactly what we wanted, except they didn't have a dimmer on the light. And I just turned to Kevin and I was like, I have to have a dimmer. I have, to have, I have to be able to pull the light down and bring it back up. He said, all right, I'll handle it. So I went off looking for other things. I came back and Kevin said, they don't make a ceiling fan with a dimmer. He said, so here's your choice. Do you want the ceiling fan or do you want the dimmer? Do you want a light or do you want a ceiling fan? And I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, 
why can't I have a ceiling fan with a dimmer? And now you may think that this story is going to end with, I found the only ceiling fan with a dimmer light. Wouldn't that seem like what I would come up here and tell you? I compromised for a ceiling fan without a dimmer. And yesterday, I walked into Nora's room, and I turned on the lights, and I turned on the, the light on the fan. And then I went, wait a minute, and I turned all the, all the other lights out except for the light in the room, and I just looked at it, and I went, I have compromised. Especially as I was putting this talk together, I was like, damn it, I can't even go in and say, and I refuse to compromise. I compromise. Now, this is a silly little thing, sort of. It's annoying me, but it's a little thing. Um, I then decided I just won't use the light. <laughs> I did, I was like, you know what? I didn't get a dimmer, it's too bright, so I don't use the light. But I love the color of the fan, and I love everything else. Now see what I'm doing? I am making sense out of something that I compromised on. So what I really did, and I haven't told him this yet, because he's gonna shoot me, I, I have been online searching for other fans, even though we've already paid quite a penny for these two gorgeous fans and paid an electrician to come and put them in. Um, I really think there is a dimmer fan out there somewhere with a light. And if there isn't, maybe someone needs to create one. Yeah. Right, Nick? What? <laughs> you have a ceiling fan with a dimmer light? Yeah. Kevin. <laughs> you do too. Now let's talk about compromise in marriage. <laughs> because sometimes you, right Yvette? Sometimes you'll be sorry you sat in that chair because I see it so clearly, I know. Um, because we do compromise in marriage, but that's not really compromise. I don't believe marriage is compromise. I believe when you supposedly compromise in marriage, you're not. You are just showing your partner how much you love them. <laughs> this is like a, a, like, a, like a painting, no one's moving. You're all like, not buying it, not buying it. Anyway, we will talk to them after service. Um, <laughs> so Ernest Holmes says, there is no compromise. You should not compromise, but we do. And I just showed you an example of me compromising. Where do you compromise? I hope, in, in, forget about the lamps. What do you compromise? Where have you compromised? Are you sitting here today having live, lived a compromised life? Someone just recently asked me if I felt that becoming a minister was a compromise because I didn't rise to stardom as an actor. Can you imagine someone said that to my face? <laughs> Not just to everybody behind my back, but right to my face. And I said, no, I don't actually. And I had a choice because I was on a major trajectory, signed with CAA, actor, writer, director, when I started studying this, and after a while, one thing became more important to me than the other, and I had more fun doing it. I have way more fun being a minister than I ever did as an actor, I really mean that. Because I get to do everything I was brought up to learn to do in this. Now that doesn't mean that I'm not still going to do acting and directing and writing when something comes up that I wanna do. I will, because it's unlimited possibilities. If I were to say no, you should never say, when someone says to you, do you think you'll ever, it should never be no, that's definitely not happening. Because there's always the possibility if you leave the room for it. So where have you compromised and where could you possibly uncompromise? Take it back. Ernest Holmes says this, man has the ability to choose what he will do with his life and is unified with a law which automatically produces that choice. So you're sitting here today with the possibility to say yes to anything you want to say yes to and inform the law. Host Leader, could you come up here with your phone and read that quote you read this morning? This was so cool this morning in what I'm saying here today. So this quote is from Jerome Braggs, a friend of mine. And so he says, stand in your power and say yes, for the universe is taking its clues for how to shape your life directly from you. If you say, 
I'm not sure this is going to work out. The universe says, okay, me neither. <laughs> My favorite part, okay, me neither. If you say, I'm not good enough for this to happen, the universe says, I'm, okay, you really are, but we won't argue with you today. So speak yes, speak possibility, power, and expectation, and you'll give the universe a perfect platform to build your exceptional life. Isn't that awesome? Thank you. A perfect platform to build your exceptional life. So every time you're speaking to the universal law of life, everything that's ready to take whatever possibility you give it and make it a reality, the universe is answering you based on what you're saying. So I love that line. If you're saying, you know, you know I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not equal to this, and the universe says, okay, you're not, and so it is. What if everything you said about your life, something behind you went, and so it is? Wouldn't you like to have someone following you around with you? So that every time you said, oh God, that's never gonna happen, and so it is. <laughs> Maybe we need to build that, build a, a little monitor in our little heads that says every time we say something disparaging about ourselves, every time we say something negative about ourselves, anybody here ever say anything negative to themselves about themselves? I love that your hand went up so fast, <laughs> right? We do. We need something to be able to tell us, and so it is, because that's what you're creating. That's the teaching we're in. That's what we get to understand. So where are you compromising with the inherent possibility of your life? How about if this month we did this? What if we cast aside all of our compromises? What if we cast aside whatever compromises we made, and the compromises I'm talking about, I'm really not talking about the compromises with your spouses and loved ones. I'm talking about the ones with you, with yourself, where you've compromised a dream for something less than, where you've compromised a career for something less than, where you've compromised a relationship for something less than, where you've compromised your health for something less than, and that's to all you smokers out there, all the people that are still doing things that are not good for them, where are you compromising your health and saying, I'm okay with a lesser health. I'm okay with a lesser amount of love. I'm okay with less money in my life. I'm okay with less uh, beauty in my life. I'm okay with less whatever. Where is that happening for you? If that is happening, wherever that is happening, it's because you have a core belief that thinks that the lesser is what you're worth. And yet every Sunday, this whole service is about reminding you, <laughs> you are the beloved because it has already swallowed you whole and that's who you are. So if we cast aside our compromises, choose from the infinite possibilities you want, if you cast aside your compromises, just think how much fun it's gonna be for you to start deciding what you actually do wanna do with your life, what you actually do wanna experience in your life. And then, as Ernest Holmes says, once you cast away the compromise, pick up what it is you want, refuse to give your mind time with its opposite. So if you choose prosperity and opulence and success, you cannot be using your mind to contemplate failure, lack, anything else. Three steps, get rid of the compromises, pick up what you want, and refuse to entertain the opposite. Ernest Holmes says this, we are limited not by principle, but by our own inability to see perfection. Our thought can bring out a condition as perfect as we can conceive. Your thoughts can bring out a life as perfect as you can conceive it to be. So go back to the top of what we were talking about today. It really is up to you. It's fully possible. Anything is possible. It is a beloved possibility because that's who you are. But it's up to you to consciously be willing to create it. So what is possible for you? What is absolutely possible for you? Because what it is, whatever it is, that's where you're headed. So I would suggest in this month of possibility, make it big. Take those possibilities 
and make them big, make them vibrant. Pick possibilities for yourself that are way beyond what you may have ever thought you were worthy of. Because you are. Just like that quote says, you know, when you say, I'm not worthy. Well, you are, but I'm not going to argue with you. The universe isn't going to argue to make you better. The universe is going to give you what you say you are. This, this month, you have the possibility to make it bigger than anything you've ever decided before. Nothing is stopping you other than your use of your mind. So this month, throw it all aside. Pick what you want. Don't entertain its opposite and watch what happens. Namaste.